Hello, my friends. By 2022, in the United States, there will be around 94.7 million cattle. This includes calves and dairy cows raised on more than 700,000 farms and ranches of various sizes. According to USDA statistics, every day across the country, between 83,000 and 104,000 cattle are sold at federally inspected plants. The number of cattle sold each day in the United States is also affected by factors such as seasonality, market volatility, or weather. In this video, we will go to large-scale cattle farms and cattle markets in the United States to see how the process of raising and selling thousands of cattle happens. These are beef cattle on a farm in the city of Broken Bow in Custer County, central Nebraska. Two days ago, these cattle were still grazing in the pasture, about three miles from the farm. However, now they have been herded to the barn area and live here during the days when the weather is too cold. November to March is usually the time of heavy snowfall in Nebraska. And this is also when about 415 beef cattle at this farm are raised in barns instead of roaming the grazing fields outside. According to USDA statistics, in 2021, Nebraska ranked second on the list of states with the most cattle with 6.5 million heads. Of course, Texas is always at the top of this list with 13.7 million heads. On warmer days, hundreds of cattle at this farm will be herded to the outside farm. Here, they can be checked for weight and health before being sold to beef factories. According to a report in March 2023, there are 21,557 cattle ranches in operation in Nebraska. Each year, the beef industry in the state also provides about 57,100 full-time jobs. In addition, the cattle and calf farms in Nebraska are also worth about $9.3 billion a year, accounting for more than half of the value of the state's agricultural industry. This is a beef and dairy farm in Merced County, Central California. Every year, about 373 beef cattle on this farm are sold to beef factories. In addition, the dairy herd here also produces about 8.7 million pounds of milk each year. As of early 2023, there are 26,130 active cattle and calf facilities in California. Each year in this state, about 1.7 to 1.9 million heads of cattle are sold and the value of them ranges from 2.2 to 2.4 billion dollars. On large scale cattle farms, the workers have a lot of work to do every day. And working on these farms normally lasts around 13 hours a day. For example, at this dairy farm with nearly 400 cows, this worker needs about 31 hours of continuous work to clean up all the manure that has been composted within 45 days. All of this manure will then be used to improve the soil in the corn and alfalfa feeds right next to the farm. For calves raised for meat, ear tagging is usually done when they're about five to six months old. And this process will be done before their first off farm move. This is a 345 
Head Beef Farm, located in Osage County, North Central Oklahoma. From April to September each year is the right time for thousands of flies to breed and develop on this farm. Therefore, spraying for fly control will be carried out every three weeks and continue through the fly season. This is a hoof treatment for a nine month old bull. Treatment for hoof wounds is usually done only on cattle that are not yet eligible for sale. For cattle with hoof wounds that are eligible for slaughter, they will be sold to slaughterhouses with these wounds untreated. We are currently on a large scale cattle ranch located in Tripp County, south of South Dakota. Each year on this farm, about 1,300 to 1,400 cattle are sold to beef factories with revenue ranging from $3.7 to $4.2 million. For many years now, South Dakota has always ranked sixth on the list of states with the most cattle According to statistics, as of September 2023, in this state there will be 19,257 cattle ranches in operation, with the number of up to 4.9 million heads. This is a beef farm in Beaverhead County, Montana. Unlike most other cattle ranches in this mountainous state, all livestock on this farm will spend most of their time living in barns, instead of roaming freely in the grasslands. When it comes to the cattle industry in Montana, an interesting thing that you need to know is that the number of cattle in this state is twice as much as the population of humans living here. Currently in Montana, there are about 27,800 cattle ranches in operation. The number of cattle being raised in this mountainous state is around 2.7 million heads. When calves and cattle are eligible for slaughter, they will be transported to cattle auction markets. In cattle auctions in the United States, the price of cattle will be determined based on several key factors, such as breed, age, and weight. In addition, supply and demand factors also greatly affect the price of cattle in an auction. While the cattle auction goes on, cattle trucks will arrive and wait to transport them to new locations, such as a new ranch or a slaughterhouse. According to statistics in 2020, in the United States, there are about 1.4 million drivers of heavy trucks and tractors. Most of them transport cattle at least one point during their careers. A typical cattle trailer attached to a trailer can carry between 20 and 40 cattle, depending on the size of the trailer. This is what happens at a beef factory in the United States. Each day across the country, about 95,000 to 113,000 cows are slaughtered. Each year, the beef industry in the United States generates between 67 and $69 billion in value and creates approximately 2.8 million permanent jobs. Hello my friends, in addition to the negative impacts caused by the 287 million feral rabbits, in recent years Australia's natural landscape and agriculture have also been significantly affected by other invasive species. These include feral goats, wild boars, feral camels and European red foxes. Most invasive species were brought to Australia in the 17th and 18th centuries by European explorers and settlers. At that time, 
These animals were brought to Australia for the purpose of recreational hunting and providing milk or meat. Over time, animals that escaped or were intentionally released into the wild have bred and formed invasive species populations in Australia's territory. Similar to how invasive species are controlled in the United States, the Australian government also allows people to hunt and trap some invasive species in large numbers. In addition, economically valuable invasive species will be collected and sold by farmers to muster for lost production costs. The first goats were brought to Australia by British workers and miners in 1788 as pets and food. After many years, goats that escaped or were released into the wild established wild goat populations. Today, there are about 2.3 million wild goats living in Australia. They are distributed mainly in semi-arid or hilly areas such as Western New South Wales, South Australia, Western Australia and Queensland. Like the white-tailed deer in the United States, the wild goats in Australia are also quite cute. However, a wild goat population of more than 2 million can cause major damage to Australia's agriculture and environment. In states such as Victoria, New South Wales and Western Australia, herds of wild goats cause significant environmental damage by competing for food, water and shelter with native wildlife and livestock. In addition, herds of wild goats also have a negative impact on Australian agriculture by overgrazing on pastures, damaging crops and reducing farmers' profits. It is estimated that wild goats cost Australia's agriculture around $25 million each year, not counting their impact on the environment or degradation of grasslands. In addition, wild goats are also considered to be the main cause of foot and mouth disease in cattle herds in Australia. Today, the commercial exploitation of wild goats in Australia is an industry worth around $29 million. Many Australian herders consider catching and selling wild goats an essential part of their business. This also helps them to minimise the economic damage caused by these millions of wild goats. Cattle ranchers and farmers in Australia often use motorbikes, horses and helicopters to muster hundreds of wild goats before selling them to goat meat processing plants. On average, each male wild goat in Australia typically weighs about 132 pounds, and an adult female goat weighs about 97 pounds. The average price farmers get for selling a wild goat is about $13.70. In addition, hunting and trapping are also used to control wild goat populations in Australia. Each year, about 39% of the wild goat population in Australia is exterminated by a variety of methods. If left unchecked, the number of wild goats in this country would double every 1.6 years. In addition to wild goats, Wild camels are also a problem for Australia's natural landscape and agriculture. 
It is estimated that in 2022, there are about 1.3 million wild camels living in Australia. They are present in 53% of Australia's grassland ecosystems, including most of the arid regions of Western Australia, South Australia, and the Northern Territory and parts of Queensland. In the 1840s, the first camels were brought to Australia by the British to aid in the exploration of the remote and inhospitable parts of the continent. Until 1907, the number of camels in Australia was only about 21,000. And at this time, they were not considered a problem. However, with the advent of motorised transportation in the 1920s, camel travel was gradually phased out and as a result, all domestic camels were released into the wild. Although camels do not have the ability to reproduce as quickly as rabbits, they are well adapted to remote lands and without natural predators. As a result, the number of wild camels in Australia has increased very rapidly. It is estimated that in the early 2000s, the population of wild camels in Australia peaked at about 3.1 million. However, when control methods such as hunting, trapping and mustering were applied, the number of these animals was reduced by more than half. In Australia, Wild camels have caused particular problems for people living in the areas where they are most common. They can destroy fences and quickly completely destroy an area of vegetation by trampling and grazing. They can also deplete small reservoirs of water in arid areas. In addition, wild camels behave aggressively towards sheep and livestock, sometimes refusing to feed or drink with the animals. It is estimated that the economic loss caused by wild camels in Australia is about $17 million per year. Of course, this reported figure is likely to be much lower than what millions of feral camels cause across mainland Australia. Currently, the most common methods of controlling feral camel populations in Australia is aerial hunting by helicopter, mustering wild camels, and then butchering them. In addition, most governments in the Australian states allow people to hunt wild camels in unlimited numbers. It is estimated that each year, around 103,000 wild camels are culled in Australia. In addition, between 9,000 and 13,000 wild camels die each year due to old age or other problems such as lack of food or the harsh climate. Each year, the measures to control wild camel populations cost the Australian government about $19 million. If population control measures are not taken, the number of wild camels in Australia will double every seven to nine years. Oh, to this day, millions of wild goats and wild camels remain a problem for the Australian government and farmers. In fact, population control methods such as hunting or mustering are the best and most humane way to check their numbers in order to protect the interests of both local communities, farmers, and Australia's native species.